You're listening to 7-Minute Stories with Aaron Califato. Make sure to subscribe, rate, and write a review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you find your podcasts. And don't forget to tell a friend. Visit our merch page at 7minutestoriespod.com. That's the number 7, minutestoriespod.com. This episode, Rage on the Turnpike. I remember saying to myself, this is going to be a very long time because all I could see looking through my windshield is cars going on for days. Look at my rear view mirror. Same thing. Cars behind me going on forever. And to paint a picture for you, it was just after July 4th weekend. I was traveling back from Cleveland, coming from Cleveland, going to New Jersey where I lived at the time. This had to be almost 10 years ago. And I don't know exactly where we were in New Jersey. I think we were in or near Edison, New Jersey, but I do know we were at a New Jersey Turnpike toll plaza. And there's about two or three cars in front of me, and then there's the toll plaza uh, gate, right? And then there's like five lanes, and we're all stacked. There's three to my right, and there's like three, or two or three to my left, and no one can get through. Whether you had an easy pass or a ticket, didn't matter. No one could get through because when you looked past that, there was traffic stacked all the way back. So we're at an absolute standstill in all directions. And it was one of those moments where you just go, you know, I don't want to run out of gas, so I'm going to conserve some energy. That's what I tried to do. I turned my car off, I cracked my windows, and I start just observing the world around me. And I noticed that in the lane next to me on my left, I saw two or three cars. And the first car that was sitting right at the gate was this middle-aged man in a kind of a gold beige sparkled Datsun. Remember those? And I just, what really got to me was how calm he was because I myself was starting to get fidgety. I started noticing people around me were getting fidgety. No one was getting angry yet, but it had been five or 10 minutes. I could tell with the heat and everything, people were starting to to lose their civility and kind of slip into animal mode. And here's this guy, he's just sitting with both hands on the steering wheel. He's got stringy, long hair, kind of combed over because he's because he's balding. And and he's just got both hands on the wheel and he's got these glasses like where you could flip down the shades. He's just staring straight ahead. His little Dotson. Well, the woman behind him it seemed like the complete opposite, right? She's in this SUV. And she's elevated above him because it's such a big car. She's got a black SUV, not tinted windows, because I could see her. And I could see she's got this big Staten Island hair, nails red, done to the nines, jewelry. She's on her phone. I swear I could see the light reflecting off her wedding ring. And you could tell her hands are in the air. And I don't know if she was just having a conversation on the phone, but she was getting heated. And I could start hearing her because she rolled down her window and she's going, I don't know how long it's going to take. I don't know how long I'm going to be online. And she hangs up the phone and I could see her gestures start changing and moving. She starts tapping her hand on the top of her SUV, starts kind of shaking her hand. And I could hear her kind of shout out just in general, come on, come on. Hurry up, move, move your car, move. And I'm thinking she's just kind of getting frustrated and letting off some steam. But what I start noticing is that she's starting to direct her frustration at the guy in front of her in the Datsun. And every time she does something, I look, he's not, he doesn't move. He doesn't even move his head. And every once in a while I could see him looking in his rear view mirror, but outside of that, this woman, for some reason, decided she was going to take all of her frustration of this moment on this guy, this poor guy. And she starts honking her horn. I could honk, honk, honk. And she goes, hey, you, buddy, move. Move that piece of junk. Move. The guy can't go anywhere. And I swear to you, she lays her horn on for like 20 seconds straight. The kind of sound that just makes your blood curdle like it just you're frustrated and you're not even that guy and you could feel how frustrating that is and she's going Hah. she just lays it on and i look at the guy in the dots and all of a sudden i see him reach down into the passenger side of his car he's kind of his head disappears and then he gets back up i got nervous at first but then he got out of his driver's 
side uh, car door and he's very calm. He just kind of walks calmly. And I go, oh, okay, he seems pretty under control. And he starts walking calmly. He shuts his door. And as he walks past his car, I see him walking towards the SUV and the woman behind him. And I see in his hand, he has a tire iron. And with emotionless on his face, he flips down the little shades that were on his glasses, flips them down, walks over with the tire iron, and then smashes her windshield. Just smashes it. Bam! And it doesn't break and shatter. It just kind of like folds in. But you could see the, the glass splinter and it just crushed this windshield. Then he walks over to the driver's side where she's at. She's screaming. She's rolling up her window. And, he, and just as she does, he smashes that window. Then he goes methodically around every single window on this car and smashes it with this tire iron. He doesn't say a word. Now, at this point, people are starting to panic. I see people calling a 911 on their phone. I'm fumbling for my phone. But at this point, it was one of those moments where you're just frozen and paralyzed because you're like, I can't believe this is actually happening. This is like a movie. And I didn't know what to do. So I grab my phone. And as I do that, he walks back to the driver's side door of the SUV and smashes the window in one more time where you could see that there's a hole and you could hear her screaming now. And he reaches his hand calmly into the, into the broken window and grabs her by her big hair, big blonde hair. And he starts trying to rip her out of the car with his bare hands and God knows what. And he's pulling her head. I could see him. Her head is popping out and he's starting to pull her out. And I get out of the car because at this point, I didn't know what else to do. And I get out and I start shouting, going, hey, hey, hey. And I'm waving my hands. And just as he looks at me, remember, he's in the lane next to me. Just as he kind of looks up, three or four people in, in a, a law enforcement uniform run. I mean, it was like a flash and they tackle him down to the ground and they're pinning him down to the ground and they're putting his arms behind his back and they're driving his face into the concrete. And I hear the woman screaming, oh, my God, how could you? Oh, my God, he tried to kill me. Oh, no. And just as that happened, I get back in my car and traffic in my lane starts moving forward and people are going boop, boop with the easy passes. And all of a sudden I just break through and in 10 seconds. I'm driving on the other side of the turnpike. And as I drove away, I thought to myself, God, I'm glad that woman's alive. But just because you drive a big car or you're surrounded by four metal walls, it doesn't mean you can go around bullying people or pushing people around because you never know when you're going to run into someone in a rusted out Datsun. Seven Minute Stories is created and performed by Aaron Califato. Audio production by Ken Went. You can connect with Ken at media216.com. Original artwork done by Pete Whitehead. See Pete's work at petewhitehead.com. And lastly, I'm Corey Burse, and I coordinate the podcast. Make sure and tune in next week for another story. <laughs>